this is Monday, April 19th, regular kids. We're going to get into more stabbing of children here in a moment and all kinds of, I, you don't have to volunteer when I say stab a kid and then you raise your hand like volunteer. And then we're going to talk about I learn and all kinds of fun things from there and the book coming up and all that. So many happy children. Let's go to there. So I learn officially begins this week. Did you get done? Yeah, you get to, you're still standing though. Until the halfway point, I know it's the whole torturing a kid thing. I feel bad, except that you lied to me, so I'm not going to feel bad now. So the whole, <laughs> see, I don't have the charger points. I can be mean in other ways. Um, so let's go with, oh, I learn officially begins Wednesday, Thursday of this week. Here is schedule thing, which I will be sending to you guys on Remind probably tomorrow evening. Uh, and then you can go ahead and have that schedule. So today, tomorrow, normal schedule. Wednesday, Thursday, you begin with I learn. So you're going to be going to that class for the first two hours of the day. Then you go to first period or third period on Thursday. Those class periods are shorter. So you're down like 40 minute class periods. So they're only half as long, except for fourth period on Wednesday and fifth period on Thursday, their normal length. So hopefully you don't hate your fourth or fifth teacher. If you do, then <laughs> sadness to you. Uh, and so that'll sort of be how things work out because it's lunch. We can't make those shorter. And then also on the Thursday day, you're going to have best and then seventh period back to back in like one long block. So it just sort of becomes all one long thing. But uh, then on the Wednesday, the second period and sixth period, you're going to have shorter class periods. Gives you an idea of what we have. My goal today is that we're going to try and get through fifth and sixth chapters. And then whatever we don't get through becomes homework that you are going to have to do. And then same thing coming up with Wednesday, we're going to be doing chapter seven and eight. But then the drawback is it's a shorter class period. So we're not going to get as far into it. So it means you're going to do a lot more reading on your own. Then the good news is we're in the exciting part of the book where people are dying left and right. So it becomes a lot easier to read. And so we'll get into all that. Questions as far as I learned goes, you were just waiting. What's up, Ellie? Um, well, so when we show up to school on Wednesday, do we go right to the class? As far as I know, you go straight to that iLearn class. Okay, so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm expecting. Unless they say something otherwise, we'll find out how it goes. Oh, and then on Friday, because I had kids ask, yes, Friday is normal for you. Just because it does not say you're doing homework on Friday, you're going to have the homework on Friday. Unless you're a virtual kid. If you're a virtual kid, you have homework and I learn on Friday. Yeah. Friday, kids, you get to come in for four hours on Friday to take your I learn test, which is every bit as exciting as you can imagine it would be. Uh, Jermaine. Sure. Points or pass? Points or pass? I don't know. You're done. You are now at 33. <laughs> sure how that qualifies as a gateway but okay so that covers those ends i think you guys are good to go we covered book did that one i don't think i have anyone else to yell at the kids who are here so we're good to go there and all right for this thing oh did he just leave that's a bummer that was bad timing um nah it was quickly uh from here we now finally got my last class period to break the 22nd mark uh, so now it is still, I have uh, Amanda Donnelly who made five seconds and she did all of them. It was insane. Uh, Eli, who's at nine seconds and then see Michaela 12. Owen Wright's now at 13. You guys are in sixth place or fifth place at 14. And then you're still ahead of seventh period, which is 15. If you guys go and you beat 14 seconds, then you get like double prize because all you have to do is beat 30 seconds. Beating 30 seconds gives you B points and all that or candy. If you can beat 14 seconds, it gives you the B points or candy also. And then Jermaine made it back in time. Aside from Jermaine, who already spoke to me, did I have anybody else who was wanting to go? Me. All right. Well, then we will give you the opportunity. Let me go ahead and pause recording. We now have a new person on the leaderboard. Zach Reynolds came in at 11 seconds, which officially moves sixth period to third place overall. Sixth 
place, Yay, Scott. So we go them. Nicely done. Well, I mean, and 11 is respectable because I didn't even think anyone was going to be able to beat 12 at one point. The fact that they've gotten down to five and nine is ridiculous. But go with those kids. Yeah. So then, quiz wise, I'm going to run through quiz with you guys real quick before we get to our learning stuff. And then from there, is yeah, so we've covered that one. Did the one kid who was missing it? I have children at home, but they've already logged off, so problem solved there too. We're down to just two kids who are left. All right, then let's run through this real quick. We have oh, you guys did well on this question, and I'm impressed because I did not expect you guys to remember it nearly as well as you did. Exposition, but yes, yeah, so the introduction of the story is called the exposition. No, you guys on that. I was. Low key impressed on that. I thought you guys would struggle a lot more. You I didn't need the paper. That paper's in the trash. It's <laughs> a weird flex, but okay. Um, oh, remember that part earlier though when you were on your iPad during class and I took it from you and kept it till the next day? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that was last week, Come on. Sherry or Cherry? And the answer is both. Her name is Sherry, but then her nickname is Cherry. Yeah. Sherry with an I, Cherry with a Y. Uh, Sherry and Marsha, why did they first leave their dates? Because they were druggies. And so I took drinking, I took drunk, I took alcohol. You didn't take drunk. I, I, I have to email you. Um, no, now given if you put something like that, just email me and I'm more than happy to give you credit. I, I had an, another I kid who put idiots and I'm like, no, uh, because that describes, well, one, that's just the wrong answer. That describes every boy. So no, the fact that I had any boy in the line, yeah. drinking, so they, they were drinking because they were idiots and it wasn't me, but still I can back it up. So I'm you, you on that one. I said drunk. I'm not the right answer. So proud. I said drunk, and I have to email you. Uh, what happens when Bob and uh, Bob and Pony and Johnny in the park? He gets stabbed. He gets stabbed. Uh, LOL. He gets yeah, He gets another hole. Six. <laughs> the, how are the Curtis boys different? They don't get in trouble. Uh, up until chapter four, then one of them gets involved in like a murder thing, and then that does technically involve well, getting in trouble with police. And they tend to frown on that. And then, why was it hard to believe that Sherry would like Dally? She was, she was, she was, she was a yeah. son. She was a greasy. Yeah, he was all greasy, and she was all greasy. When Pony accidentally comes home, what does Derry do? And again, I had a bunch of answers on this. So if you put something that did not work, email me. So yeah, like I put the slap, smack, and hit were the main ones. But I had like attack him, assault him. And so I tried to come up with as many different ideas as I could that would cover what you guys had. But sometimes I had to be creative. Uh, let's go with when Bob and Randy and the socials confront Bonnie and Johnny. Why does Johnny recognize they them? Up. Oh, they beat him up. They beat him up. There you go. They were the socials who beat him up and left him for dead. That's the premise of thing you remember from people. And when Pony Boy is talking to Cherry, who is Mickey Mouse? Horse. Horse. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. There, I didn't really think there was many other ways to do that particular answer, so it was pretty much just horse. Uh, why do Johnny and Pony Boy choose Dally for help? He has the history of knowing how to run from the popos. So the fact that you're going to get in trouble, he's the one that knows how to help. And when they run away, what transportation do they use? Train. 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 Yeah. Took again, train or boxcar or train car. Or uh, caboose. Technically, I did not put that down, but if you put caboose and then emailed me, I'd be more than happy to take it. I would also take loss of points for being on your phone, but that's another thing you could try and do too. 
random kid. Who knows who these people could be? That is a giant pile of candy trash. Obviously. I'm not sure that makes it better, being as that Halloween was five months ago. But <laughs> it was like seven months ago. He's still not that far, so okay. November, December. So that was that five, the exact same number I just said? Six. Oh, six. I was like five. So back to here. These were all the questions that we had. So my question is, which one do you think was the one that we struggled the well, hang on. One, this one doesn't count because that was technically our lowest one. That's only because kids had to keep emailing me for it. So there was another one that was the actual yeah. lowest, lowest That's one. That's the one I missed. I think this one, I'm just looking for you to hold a finger so I can count your finger. And if you think it's 11 or 12, it would just be 11 or 12 versus one or two. So you're going with just a straight up number two? No, no, 12. Ah. Oh, so this. There you go. So 12. I don't like this. Because you can't that. Go right that. 12, 12. I see a 10. I see devil horns. Do you not know about that? <laughs> So you can, and then 11 also. So that was, all right, and then 10, and 2, and you are correct. But for those of you who said 12, yeah, you were right there. Those are the two lowest ones. Partly the reason being is that I read the book with you down to here. These two questions came from the part that you had to read on your own, Yeah, which a lot of kids did not do, and then that's probably why you guys missed them. The rest of them, you guys did well on. Like, across the board, you guys did well for the most part, except for that one. And a lot of you did well on it. You just had to email me to get your credit, and then those two down there at the end. So, overall, I was pretty impressed and happy with it. So, go you guys on that. With the schedule coming up this week, we're going to get through Chapter 8 for the quiz coming up on Friday. We're going to try and get through 5 and 6 or as much as we can today. On Wednesday, we have a short class period, so we're not going to be able to get through a whole lot. To help you out with all of that, you have Wednesday and Thursday after I learn to read. So your goal should be hopefully to finish as much of a book as you can to try and help you out, but we'll see what we can do from there. To make Solia's life easier, here's where we're going to take our three-minute break. After three-minute break, then we'll get a chance to do the whole sitting down thing. So let's do pausing, and we're back. All right. Then to there. Now let's go to Outsidery's time to help you guys out from there. So I had a number of ki kids contact me last week asking about where can you find the audiobook. Allow me to make fun of you guys again. When you email me about the audiobook, I respond, and then I make fun of you. Because every day in class, I tell you where to find audiobook. To find audiobook, it is on the page that says Outsiders. When you click Outsiders page, it is going to take you to the audiobook. That is how you find audiobook. Same thing we've been doing this entire year. So you're more than welcome to use audiobook. That is where you find audiobook to use audiobook. For those of you who don't want to, that's fine. Oh. Some of the audiobook pages are me talking, and some of them are another person talking. It depends on whether I could find a file with me talking, and other ones are just going to be a, a random reading person and then getting a chance to go from there. All right, so now let's cover that. Yay. Let's see. So we get to get a chance to get back to Chapter 5 with you guys. We did the greasers. We did the fighting. Greasers. And the socials. Just By the way. I've shown you all of these pictures before. The reason I show them to you again is just, one, we've not done it since late last week. And so I figure the more reminding we can do, the better chance it has a chance of sitting in your brain. So we try it. We try it. I mean, some brains are more of a struggle than others. The guy in the blue shirt. <laughs> the guy in the blue shirt in the middle of the sky. His name is Hang on one second. I was distracted charging grand points. Go ahead. Guy in the blue shirt. Tim and Jim. Oh, yeah. That was pretty good. Jim. Jim Bob. Well, it seems like he'd go more by a James than a Jim. Like I can definitely see that. Jim and James, yeah. yeah. yeah he would definitely not go by Jim. His middle name is going to be Junior, though. Yeah. Well, if that's James, that makes him Tames. And then we have the. Let's see. The, let's see it's there. And his have, big name is Timothy. Uh, smashing of the bottle and the poking and the stuff like that. And we're good to go from there. We have the empty lot. Then it's there. And then the drawback is. 
Because as soon as you share them, I have to take them from you because that's the whole thing is you can't share them. Nice if you have them. But once you do that, it makes other kids feel bad and they feel sad and stuff like that. So that's why I like it. I get to give out candy, but as soon as you guys give candy, it's like watching a bunch of sharks feed on minnows. They all like start jumping on each other and we can't have kids attacking each other. Yeah, I get to attack kids. And then so we have the empty lot attacking poor kids. And we have some beer. We got to chapter two, going to the drive-in, meeting Cherry and Marsha, and then that one dally guy being, and then who drives the Mustang would be the, uh, the, the boyfriend. Bob, the boyfriend, and Bob and Randy. Now, Bob and Randy are not a couple. We're not shipping them. Uh, it's the fact that they were two separate people. They just both be dating Cherry and Marsha. Uh, it would be Cherry and Bob, and if you ship them, it becomes Chob. Uh, that means not so. Uh, <laughs> Randy and Marsha, which becomes Marcia. Mandy. No, Marsha. Nope. No. <laughs> Sounding right either, so we'll just say Marsha and Randy. Zach? Uh, it would be very nice. That works for you. Bob too. and Cherry, you put the bees. The other way around, that works too. Berry. Berry. You said chop. Berry. Berry. That works too. Chop and berry. Uh, no, no, none of that's working for me either. Berry. Then we got to the making fun of the Beatles. We made, oh no, sorry. The Socias like the Beatles, and then the, uh, what do you call them? The, the Greasers like Elvis Presley, and then the boys picked him up, and then, ooh. Uh, even though it was in the quiz, what is it that Derry does to Pony Boy that makes him run away? Smash! Uh, it, it is successful. He does run away. And as we have that, the busted pop bottle is stabbing, and then. Uh, and then just the stabbing in there. Who's not Gucci Boo to random man's belly button? <laughs> snooker, that's where 2 bit takes off to go play Snooker. Then we get to the empty lot, and then chapter four was when they go back. Oh, when they go back, they don't go to the empty lot. They go to the fountain in the park, and that's what they have. Here, the Socias, the first time the Socias grabbed Pony Boy on the way home from the movie, they attempted to cut his hair. This time, they're trying to wash his hair. Apparently, the Socias are very into hair care products, uh, and apparently the, the greasers are not, because they tried to do the whole hair care thing and failed. Of course, they have to you, Chad. And then what happens to Bob with the whole thing? He dies. Why does he die? Because he dies by Jojo. He gets pokey pokey. And apparently you really pass by the whole pokey pokey thing. Yay. And then, although this is not what he uses. All he does is not use the poop like that. Which, if you want to see at the end of class, just come see me. You're welcome to try and hurt yourself. This doesn't have a blade on it, so you can't really hurt yourself at all. It's just a matter of like. Didn't he use his flick blade? Uh, he did. So he did the stabbing, yeah. He doesn't do the flippy, flippy, flippy out like that. That's just Are you putting your knife close to the creepy doll baby? Yeah. Well, that way when the creepy doll baby wants to attack you, I don't want her to work to get the weapons. That way she can just pick him up and just go running across the room like, Chucky, yeah, 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 come running at you. Yeah, and then she can, I mean, given one of them is just her combing your hair. And you're like holding you down. It's like, you look pretty. And so that becomes this own disturbing issue. Are we supposed to comb the dolls? Or if she's stabbing you with this one, you're probably safe. Uh, because she'll just get really excited stabbing and you guys like, sit there and giggle like, oh no, I'm dying, stop it. So I, I, I'm doing that to help you out. So when the doll comes to life and she thinks she's killing you, you can pretend you're dead when she wanders off. But there's no blood. Be like, oh. There will be no blood. I'm assuming it's a doll and they're not very smart. But, you know, look at but can't she hear you? Can't she hear you? I don't know. I'm not familiar with spooky dolls. Zachary. When has your face been on the staring at what? Uh, it's been there all year. Yes, all year. It's been up there since like 2010. Oh, yeah. The Broby, there's a Broby. I was just born then. Broby corn, and then the Campbell corn, and then a Malia corn. No, I was, I, so that was a bad thing. Ellie, you take everything down. Yeah, this summer. Yeah, they'll all go into boxes. And yeah, it'll yeah, yeah, get rearranged. Not everything is going to go back up, so I'll end up like sending some rooms? stuff out. No, they're fixing all the rooms over the summertime, like redoing the, I don't know. Yes, Miss Brush has to take out all of her stuff. I know. Then she like spent that one time where she kept yelling over the teacher who was talking, and then she learned a lesson and stuff like that. And oh wait, no, that was a kid in class. Jermaine. Do you know how to get a job this year? Uh, probably stores. Yeah. They usually try to hire people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Way to flex on people. And then we went to see Dally, and Dally's one that helps them. Oh, where does Dally tell them to go? He does tell them to go to church. <laughs> this is where he's laid. The, the church on the top of the hill in the country. He's like, go to Windry's. You boys need church. 
They're like, we do? And he's like, yes, an old abandoned church. Like, oh, thank you. So that's the church they go to. Good job, I do too. Church. So now we're going to pick up on page 68 with the church. And we're going to get there. We're all going to eventually find out. Apparently we're struggling today. There we go. So, oh, I found picture of church. Picture of church to help you out. But we'll leave it on here for a second. Page 68, Old Abandoned Church, Chapter 5. I woke up late in the afternoon. For a second, I didn't know where I was. You know how it is when you wake up in a strange place and wonder where in the world you are until memory comes rushing over you like a wave. I have convinced myself that I dreamed everything that happened the night before. <laughs> now I'm really in bed, I thought. It's late, and both Dairy and Soda Pop are up. Dairy's cooking breakfast, and in a minute, he and Soda will come in and drag me out of bed and wrestle me down and tickle me until I think I'll die if they don't stop. And it's me and Soda's turn to do the dishes after we eat, and then we'll all go outside and play football. Johnny and Tubit and I would get Derry on our side, since Johnny and I are so small and Derry is the best player. It'll go like the usual weekend morning. And I tried telling myself that while I lay on the cold rock floor, wrapped up in Dally's jacket, listening to the wind rushing through the trees, dry leaves outside. Finally, I quit pretending and pushed myself up. I was stiff and sore from sleeping on that hard floor, but I'd never slept so soundly. I was still groggy. I pushed off Johnny's jeans jacket, which had somehow gotten thrown across me, blinked, scratching my head. It was awful quiet, just the sound of the rushing wind in the trees. Suddenly, I realized that Johnny wasn't there. Johnny! I called loudly. The old wooden church echoed me. Johnny! 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 I looked around wildly, almost panic-stricken but then caught sight of some crooked lettering written in the dust of the floor. Went to get supplies. Be back soon, J.C. Real quick, J.C. is Johnny Cade. Yeah, I had a kid earlier who thought because they were in church that it was Jesus Christ. And I tried to explain, I'm like, no. They're like, but they're in a church. I'm like, I don't think Jesus just shows up and is like, I got your back, boo. And then just like writes in the dust and then leaves. I mean, he might. You know how Jesus is. He's a busy guy. But. So Johnny is what they're referring to. I sighed and went to the pump to get a drink. The water from it was like liquid ice, and it tasted funny. That's, I don't know if you guys have ever been to um, a, a pump well, like yeah. out in the country, that has like has like the egg taste of the water. That's what they're referring to. They're going to mention it a couple of times, but the water is no bueno. <clears throat> it tasted funny, but it was water. I splashed some of my face, and that woke me up pretty quick. I wiped my face off on Johnny's jacket and sat down on the back steps. The hill the church was on dropped off suddenly about 20 feet from the back door. and You could see for miles and miles. It was like sitting on the top of the world. When you haven't got anything to do, you remember things in spite of yourself. I could remember every detail of the whole night, but it had the unreal quality of a dream. It seemed much longer than 24 hours since Johnny and I had met Dally at the corner of Pickett and Sutton. <laughs> well, maybe it was. Maybe Johnny had been gone a whole week and I just slept. Maybe he'd already been worked over by the fuzz was waiting to get the electric chair since he wouldn't tell where I was. Maybe Dally had been killed in a car wreck or something and no one would ever know where I was and I'd just die up here alone and, and turn into a skeleton. My overactive imagination was running away with me again. Sweat ran down my face and back. I was trembling. My head swam. And I leaned back and closed my eyes. And I guess it was partly delayed shock. Finally, my stomach calmed down. I relaxed a little, hoping that Johnny would remember cigarettes. I was scared sitting there by myself. I heard someone coming up to the dead leaves toward the back of the church, and I ducked inside the door. Then I heard a whistle long and low, ending in a sudden high note. I knew that whistle well enough. It was used by us and the shepherd gang for who's there. I returned it carefully and darted out the door so fast that I fell off the steps and sprawled flat under Johnny's nose. I propped myself up my elbows and grinned up at him. Hey, Johnny, it's a fancy meeting you here. 
He looked down at me over the big package. I swear, pony boy, you're getting to act more like Tubit every day. I tried unsuccessfully to cock an eyebrow. Who's acting? I rolled over and sprang up, happy that someone was there. What'd you get? Come on inside. Dally told us to stay inside. We went in. Johnny. Hang on a second. Kid showing up late. Really late. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, at least he showed up. We went in and Johnny dusted off a table with his jacket and started taking things out of the sack and lining them up neatly. A week's supply of bologna, two loaves of bread, a box of matches, Johnny went on. I got tired of watching him do it all, so I started digging into the sack myself. Whee! I sat down. I don't know why he said we. I sat down <laughs> food. I sat down on a dusty chair and stared. Like a paperback copy of Gone with the Wind. This is the book he's going to be referring to. They're going to talk about it multiple times. It's, I think it was written back in the like 1920s or something. This is a long time ago about the Civil War. How'd you know I was wanted one? Johnny Redden. I remembered you saying something about it once. And me and you went to see that movie. Remember? I thought you could maybe read it out loud and help kill time or something. Gee, thanks. I put the book down reluctantly. I wanted to start it right then. Rockside, a deck of car. Suddenly I realized something. Johnny, wait, if you ain't thinking of... Johnny sat down, pulled out his knife. We're going to cut our hair. You're going to bleach yours. He looked at the ground carefully. They'll have our descriptions in the paper. We can't fit them. Oh, no! My hand flew to my hair. No, Johnny, not my hair. It was my pride. It was long and silky, just like sodas, only a little redder. Our hair was tough. We didn't have to use much grease on it. Our hair labeled us greasers, too. It was our trademark, the one thing we were proud of. Maybe we couldn't have Corvairs or Madra shirts, but we could have hair. Real quick, he's referring to hydrogen peroxide. This is the hydrogen peroxide he's talking about. So it's the brown bottle, little white cap. It's like the bubbly stuff. Usually if you were a kid and you skinned your knee, I fell off your bike, your parents were like, probably mom, would pour it like in the little cap and pour it on your knee. Like it would bubble up and you'd sit there and scream like, it hurts so bad. That's what they're referring to. It also works as bleach in your hair. If you were to put it into your hair and then go sit in the sun, it'll pull the color out of your hair. So it's something where if you go from dark hair, it'll take you into the lighter hair, something along those lines. That's, you know, that is brand new. Brand new recognition skills. And so that's what they're referring to here, is that they're going to put it into their hair and then make their hair go lighter and then use the knife to go cutty-cutty on the hair. Uh, by the way, they're using Johnny's knife. When was the last time they used Johnny's knife? Yeah. yeah. So realize the fact that there might be bits of bob still on this knife. That they're ready to cut the hair with. So, sorry. Didn't mean to put that image in your head, but I mean, it's true. And they did just literally just stab it away with it. So. Sorry. Let's, let's go back to this. Let's, we'll go back to that picture then. All right. So don't pay attention to the bits of bob. We have to anyway. We got caught. You know the first thing the judge does is make you get a haircut. I don't see why. Dally could just as easily mug somebody with short hair. I don't know either. It's just a way of trying to break us. They can't really do anything to guys like Curly Shepherd or Tim. They've had about everything done to them. And they can't take anything away from them because they don't have anything in the first place. So they cut their hair. I looked at Johnny imploringly. Johnny sighed. I'm going to cut mine, too, and wash the grease out, but I can't bleach it. I'm too dark-skinned to look okay, blonde. Oh, come on, pony boy. Grow back. Apparently, that's one of the things that Johnny mentioned is that he has, I think he either says Native American or uh, Mexican blood in him, so he's got darker skin complexion, so he can't dye his hair. Pony boy is a lily white boy, so he's good to go blonde. But with Johnny, because he has darker complexion, if he goes blonde, it's going to look unusual and he's not going to blend in. He'll stand out. So they can both cut their hair, but only Ponyboy is going to bleach his hair. Okay, I said wide-eyed. Get it over with. Johnny flipped out the razor edge of his switch, took hold of my hair, and started sawing on it. I shuddered. 
Not too short. Johnny, please. Finally, it was over with. My hair looked funny, scattered over the floor in tufts. It's lighter than I thought it was, I said, examining it. Can I see what I look like now? No, Johnny said, slowly staring at me. We gotta bleach it first. After I'd sat in the sun for 15 minutes to dry the bleach, Johnny let me look in the old cracked mirror we found in a closet. I did a double take. My hair was even lighter than soda pops. I'd never combed it to the side like that. It just didn't look like me. It made me look younger and scarier, too. Boy, howdy, I thought. This really makes me look tough. I look like a blasted pansy. I was miserable. Johnny handed me the knife. He looked scared, too. Cut the front, then out the rest. I'll comb it back after I wash it. Johnny, you can't wash your hair in that freezing water in this weather. You'll get a cold. He only shrugged. Go ahead and cut it. I did the best I could. He went ahead and washed it anyway, using the bar of soap he bought. I was glad I had to run away with him instead of the two bit of Steve or Dally. That'd be one thing they'd never think of. <laughs> Soap. I gave him Dally's jacket to wrap up in, and he sat shivering in the sunlight on the back steps, leaning against the door, combing his hair back. It was the first time that I could see he had eyebrows. He didn't look like Johnny. His forehead was whiter where his bangs had been. I mean, it would have been funny if I hadn't been so scared. He was still shivering with cold. I guess, he said. I guess we're disguised. I leaned back next to him solemnly. I guess so. Ah, shoot, Johnny said with fake cheerfulness. It's just hair. Shoot nothing. It took me a long time to get that hair just the way I wanted it. And besides, this just ain't us. It's like being in a Halloween costume we can't get out of. Well, we got to get used to. Johnny said, finality. We're in big trouble, and it's our looks or us. I started eating the candy bar. <sighs> I'm still tired, I said. To my surprise, the ground blurred, and I felt tears running down my cheeks. I brushed them off hurriedly. Johnny looked as miserable as I felt. I'm sorry I cut your hair off, pony boy. Oh, it ain't that, I said with a few bites of chocolate. I mean, not all of it. I'm just a little spooky. I really don't know what's the matter. I'm just mixed up. I don't know, Johnny said through chattering teeth as we went inside. Things have been happening so fast. I put my arm across his shoulders to warm him up. Two bit should have been in that little one horse store. Man, we are in the middle of nowhere. The nearest house is two miles away. Things are just laying out wide open. Just Wait for somebody slick like Tubit to come pick him up. He could have walked out with half the store. He leaned back beside me. I could feel him tremble. Good old Tubit, he said in a quavering voice. He must have been as homesick as I was. Remember how he was wisecracking last night? Uh, last night. I mean, just last night, we were walking Cherry and Marsh over to Tubit's. I mean, just last night, we were laying in the lot. Looking up at the stars and dreaming. Stop it! Johnny gasped beneath the clenched teeth. Shut up about last night. I killed a kid last night. He could have been 17 or 18. I killed him. How'd you like to live with that? He was crying. I held him like soda had held him the day we found him lying in the lot. <laughs> Me too. But they were drowning you and, and I was so scared. He was quiet. Sure is a lot of blood, people. He got up suddenly, began pacing back and forth, slapping his pockets. What are we gonna do? I was crying by then. It was getting dark, and I was cold and lonesome. I closed my eyes and leaned my head back, but the tears came anyway. This is my fault, Johnny said in a miserable voice. He'd stopped crying when I started. For bringing a little 13-year-old kid along. You ought to go home. You can't get in any trouble. You didn't kill him. No! Fourteen! I've been fourteen for a month, and I'm in it as much as you are. I don't stop crying in a minute. I can't help it. He slumped down beside me. I didn't mean it like that, Pony Boy. Don't cry, Pony Boy. We'll be okay. Don't cry. 
I leaned against him and bawled until I went to sleep. And I woke up late that night. Johnny was resting against the wall. I was asleep on his shoulder. Johnny, you awake? I was warm and sleepy. Yeah. We ain't gonna cry no more, are we? Nope. We all cried out now. We're getting used to the idea. We're gonna be okay now. That's what I thought. Then, for the first time since Dowie and I sat down behind those girls with a nightly double, I relaxed. We could take whatever was coming now. The next four or five days were the longest days I've ever spent in my life. They're going to talk about the book again. We killed time by reading Gone with the Wind and playing poker. Johnny sure did like that book, although he didn't know anything about the Civil War, and even less about plantations, and I had to explain a lot of it to him. It amazed me how Johnny could get more meaning out of some of the stuff there than I could. I was supposed to be the deep one. Johnny had failed a year in school and never made good grades. I mean, he couldn't grasp anything that was shoved out of him too fast, and you know, I guess his teachers thought he was just plain dumb. But he wasn't. He was just a little slow to get things, and he liked to explore things once he did get them. He was especially stuck on the southern gentlemen, impressed with their manners and charm. I bet they were cool old guys, he said, his eyes glowing after I'd read the part about them riding in the Sure, death, because they were gallant. They remind me of Dally. <laughs> Dally? Shoot, he ain't got any more manners than I do. You saw how he treated those girls the other night? Soda's more like them southern boys. Yeah, in the manners bit. And the charm, too, I guess, Johnny said slowly. But one night, I saw Dally get picked up by the fuzz, and he kept real cool and calm the whole time. They was getting him for breaking out the windows in the school building. But it was Tubit that did it. Dally knew it. But he just took that sentence without batting an eye or even denying it. That's Gallus. That the first time I realized the extent of Johnny's hero worship for Dally Winston. Of all of us, Dally's the one I liked the least. He didn't have Soda's understanding or Dash or Tubit's humor or even Derry's Superman qualities. I realized that these three appealed to me because they were like the heroes in the novels I read. Dally was real. And I liked my books and clouds and sunsets. Dally was so real, he scared me. Johnny and I never went to the front of the church. You could see the front from the road, and sometimes farm kids rode their horses by on their way to the store. So we stayed in the very back usually sitting on the steps and looking across the valley. We could see for miles, see the ribbon of highway and the small dot that were houses and cars. We couldn't watch the sunset since the back faced east, but I loved to look at the colors of the fields and the soft shadings of the horizon. One morning, I'm going back to this one, church. One morning, I woke up earlier than usual Johnny and I slept huddled together for warmth. Dally had been right when he said it would get cold where we were going. Being careful not to wake Johnny up, I went to sit on the steps and smoke a cigarette. The dawn was coming then. All the lower valley was covered with mist. And sometimes little pieces of it broke off and floated away in small clouds. The sky was lighter in the east, and the horizon was a thin golden line. The clouds changed from gray the pink, and the mist was touched with gold. There was a silent moment when everything held its breath, and then the sun rose. It was beautiful. God, Johnny's voice beside me made me jump. That sure was pretty. Yeah, I sighed, wishing I had some paint to do a picture with while the sight was still fresh in my mind. The mist was what was pretty. It was all like gold and silver. By the way, if you've never seen a sunrise, I found a picture of one to help you guys out in case that's something you've never experienced. Mm. It's too bad it couldn't stay like that all the time. Well, nothing gold can stay. Now I was remembering a poem I read once. What? 
Uh, nature's first green is gold. Her heart is hue to hold. Her early leaf's a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down today. Nothing gold can stay. Johnny was staring at me. Where'd you learn that? Uh, that's what I meant. Robert Frost wrote it. Uh, he meant more to it than I'm getting through. I was trying to find the meaning the poet had in mind, but it eluded me. And I always remember it because I never quite got what he meant by it. You know, Johnny said slowly, I never noticed colors and clouds and stuff until you kept reminding me about them. And it seems like they were never there before. Your family sure is funny. What happens to be so funny about it? I asked stiffly. Johnny looked at me quickly. I didn't mean nothing. I meant, well, not Soda, he kind of looks like your mother did, but he acts just exactly like your father. And there he is the spitting image of your father. But he ain't wild and laughing all the time like he was. He acts like your mother, and you don't act like either one. <laughs> I know. I mean, well, he said, thinking it over, you ain't like any of the gang. I mean, you know, I couldn't tell Two Bit or Steve or even Derry about the sunrise and clouds and stuff. I couldn't even remember that poem around them. I mean, they just don't dig. Just you and Soda Pop. <laughs> and maybe Cherry Balance. Johnny shrugged. Yeah, I guess we're different. Shoot, I said, blowing a perfect smoke ring. Maybe they are. Quick pause, because that poem shows up again multiple times later on in the book. They're going to keep referring back to it. So this one, where it says the whole... Uh, nature's first green is gold and all of that. It's got two meanings to it. One, do you guys know what that Eden is they're referring to? Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. So the whole thing with Adam and Eve and the snake. And so it starts off that Garden of Eden was a place of happiness and then it becomes a place of horror and Adam and Eve get kicked out and we get to choose the first evil. The poem is saying two things. One, the whole, so nature's first green is gold, hard you to hold, early leaves of flower, only so an hour, leaves size to leaf, even sank to grief. Everything that is beautiful in the world dies. Everything that is good in the world dies. Everything that you love in the world dies. Everything that possibly exists that bring you joy is going to disappear. And your thought is, holy crap, that's depressing. But the poem is trying to go in a positive way. And it's saying... Because everything you love is going to eventually leave, enjoy it while you have it. If there is a thing you enjoy in your life, if it's a friend, if it's a sport, if it's a class, enjoy it while you have it. Eventually, it'll disappear. Whatever that thing you have, it's your goal. So if playing sports is your happy place, that's your goal. If playing Minecraft until midnight is your happy place, that's your goal because eventually there are going to come a time when that game does not exist. So the idea is nothing gold can stay. So the idea is hold on to your goal. Don't let yourself get depressed. And so they're going to talk about it in multiple times in the book about what is your goal or staying on to your goal. This is what they're referring to. Graham? Can't gold stay gold? It can, except for gold. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're saying all of my friends are just in Die. Yeah, I mean, life is a fatal disease. So, I mean, everyone who's ever lived has died. Well, if they're not, they're going to die soon. Yeah, well, he says that now, you know, the couple of years. He's not dead, right? He's not dead yet. He's been existing since one. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be getting to a Thunderbird here in a second. This is the car they're going to be referring to. I haven't gotten there yet. By the fifth day, I was so tired of bologna, I nearly got sick every time I looked at it. We had eaten all of our candy bars in the first two days. Shocker. I was dying for a Pepsi. I'm what you might call a Pepsi addict. I drink them like a fiend, and going for five days without one like was Rose. about to kill me. Yes, like a It's also frighteningly accurate. Johnny promised to get some if we ran out of supplies and had to get some more, but that didn't help me right then. I was smoking a lot more there than I usually did, I guess because it was something to do. Although Johnny warned me that I would get sick, so that I would get sick smoking so much. 
we were careful with our cigarettes. If that old church ever caught fire, there'd be no stopping it. Now, on the fifth day, I read up to Sherman's siege of Atlanta and Gone of the Wind. Oh, Johnny, a hundred and fifty bucks from poker games, smoked two packs of camels, meaning a type of cigarette, and as Johnny had predicted, got sick. I hadn't eaten anything all day, and smoking on an empty stomach, it don't make you feel too great. And I curled up in a corner to sleep off the smoke. I was just about asleep when I heard, as if from a great distance, a long, low whistle that went off in a sudden high note, and then Mrs. Beck stepped into the room. Mrs. Beck, what's up? I was too sleepy to pay any attention, although Johnny didn't have any reason to be whistling like that. He was sitting on the Beck steps trying to read Gone with the Wind. I'd almost decided that I had dreamed the outside world and there was nothing real but bologna sandwiches and the Civil War and the old church and the mist in the valley. It seemed to me that I would always live in the church or maybe lived during the Civil War and then somehow got transplanted. That shows you what a wild imagination I have. A toad nudged me in the ribs. Glory! said a rough but familiar voice. He looks different with his hair like that. I rolled over and sat up, rubbing the sleep out of my eyes and yawning. Suddenly I blinked. Hey, Dolly! Hey, bony boy! He grinned down at me. Or should I say, sleeping beauty? I never thought I'd live to see the day when I would be so glad to see Dolly Winston. But right then, he meant one thing. Contact with the outside world. And it suddenly became real and vital. And on page 80 is where I stop reading with you. So you're fine. You're going to have to get through chapter 6. Your stopping point is page 99. So it's about 20 pages. We will do a little bit of talking on Wednesday because my favorite scene in the whole book is in chapter 6. Then I think, let's see, we have a heater coming up. They're going to be talking about that. And all right. other than that, you will need to read on your own to finish chapter six by Wednesday. And you do have I Learn Testing Wednesday, Thursday. Hang on. Home children, we'll see you later. Can I see the knife? In a second. Hang on. Oh, yeah.